Hi everyone, this is Christy from Meeting Wellness. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And today I am here with my new friend, M. She said I could call her that. Yes. <laughs> and um, yes, I heard about M from Limitless Lindy and I have heard that she just has a fantastic story, carnivore story of healing and the journey that she's on. And so I'm gonna hand it over to you, M. And I would love to hear about your health journey. How did you find carnivore and what's been going on with that? How did I find carnival? It was, you know, like that phrase at the 11th hour mm. when something happens. Yeah. We'd got to the point, my family and I, bless my husband, he would he would have supported me whichever direction I went. And by whatever direction I mean, we were talking about surgery, lap band, mm. gastric sleeve. And I would put off going there for years, for years, because it's like that was the to me, that was the final destination, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, a friend of mine who thankfully rattled my cage two years ago, I was basically sitting here waiting to die. I'm not going to mince words. If you know me, you know that I don't, I don't hold back. I keep it as real as I possibly can because... If you're guarded, you're not telling the full story, and that's just not my jam. So, you know, Adrian, he rattled my cage, and he's like, what are you doing? There was more to it than that, but anyway, um, he had a friend. He said, well, dear, he said, I've got this friend who eats meat. He's a carnivore. I'm like, and he started telling me, oh, and he was like, you know, flabby and this, that, that, unfit and this, that, and the other, and you should see him now. And so he showed me a picture. I'm like, I mean, this man has got muscles. It's like ripped. And I'm like, and he just eats meat? That that was my reaction. Mm -hmm. he just eats meat? <clears throat> so he mentioned it one more time towards the end of last year. This was around the time that uh, my husband and I were talking about surgery, which is not cheap over here. Not cheap. A lot of out-of-pocket expenses. So I went to YouTube and I typed in carnivore and, oh, my God, the stuff that came up in the search results. But the first three... The first things that actually came up were the likes of Dr. Berry, Dr. Chaffee, Dr. Baker. So, like I said, when when I subscribe to your channel, it doesn't matter how many videos you've got, I'm going to watch them all because I'm going to binge watch them all because that's my way. So, if you imagine how many videos those guys have got. Yeah. Yeah. So... I was looking into this and I was researching it with these doctors and I found myself getting angry because I started to think about my poor mother who was a type 2 diabetic. Yeah. And my dad who had blood pressure and gout. And then there was me with all my problems and um, by all accounts this was the winning ticket not the magic pill, but the winning ticket. And I mentioned it to my husband. He said, oh, he said, only one way to find out. And I said, yep. I said, 1st of January, that's it. I'm all in. So I literally went cold turkey on so many things. I mean, I even found out, I mean, the hot topic at the moment seems to be maltodextrin. <laughs> Yes, um, it is. <laughs> I've been saying that for eight months, just saying. I've been mentioning it to people on my channel for nearly eight months, and it's one of the reasons why I make my own. I'm like, no, because I saw a video with from Dr. Berg, and uh, I'm like, worse than sugar? Excuse me? Mm -hmm. And so that meant Pepsi Max, Diet Coke, all those diet, all the diet drinks, gone. I haven't drunk uh, full sugar drinks for years because I don't like the taste of them. But I was happy to have, you know, the diet drinks. But 
first of November, they, uh, sorry, first of January, they were gone, gone. So I drink either mineral water, still water, bubbly water. Even those are going down now. My taste buds are changing. Mm. Something's happening there. I don't know what's going on, but anyway. And I drink coffee and I have cream in it and I have one meal a day. And it could range from lamb, beef, pork. I'm on a bit of a bacon and eggs kick at the moment. Can't seem to get enough of that bacon. Mm. Mm. But tonight, for instance, um, I'm having my husband's cooking tonight and he's going to cook up a whole pile of lamb chops. So that's dinner sorted. It's like save a fortune when you're eating one meal a day, dear. But, yeah, but butter, I do, I, I take butter's considered a snack. But to me, it's almost like medicine. And that has been mm -hmm. helping a lot like a really 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 not so yeah and I mean I've been on this thing now for 10 months I've lost 106 pounds wow in 10 months wow yeah that's amazing went to my doctor on Thursday uh, Friday and um I hadn't seen him in two years I didn't need to go <laughs> I didn't need to go, but I did. On this Friday, you didn't. You Friday, you didn't need to go, but you just went. No, no. Friday, I haven't needed to go to the doctor for nearly two years. Got it, got it, got it. But then on Friday, you needed to. I go. needed to okay. go because I had okay. a okay. nasty sinus infection and a mm -hmm. bit of a middle ear infection as well. It's amazing how quickly it's clearing up. Sure, I'm taking antibiotics, but I. The funny thing is, usually when I take antibiotics, I feel lousy, mm -hmm. but I don't. Mm. So it's it's like I'm taking, I know it's working. I know the antibiotics are helping me. I don't like them, full disclaimer. I don't like them. But, you know, there's probably that little tiny little part of me that's still not quite out of the woods yet in terms of infections and how you need to deal with them. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of other things that you can do, but yeah, this was the first middle ear infection that I'd ever had. And I'm like, Oh, and I was blocked. I, I could mm. not hear anything at all. So I was a bit scared. So yeah, my journey has been the ride of a lifetime. Somebody said that at the start of my journey and they weren't kidding. They just were not kidding. It, it's the first thing that started to lift was that fog. You think you're thinking yeah. clear, but when you do something like this and that fog lifts, it's like, wait, what? And mm -hmm. you start to see family dynamics and you're like, and this has been going on for how long? And you, you <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, and you're like, oh heck no, ain't nobody got time for that. So it's it's like I I you, you're just so much more aware of your surroundings and what's going on. Mm -hmm. And like the kids that they're still getting used to having a bitey, bitey mother. Cause I used to go, eh, whatever, eh, whatever. But it's like, no, you're doing the dish now. <laughs> End of story. Don't like it? Net's gone. <laughs> <laughs> They're still getting used. To that. Yeah, yeah. The feistiness. The feistiness is coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's the feistiness that I had when both my parents were alive. Mm -hmm. Even though my husband's well aware of how feisty I can be, I'm not entirely sure he's completely prepared, if I'm being completely <laughs> honest. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's been so, quite a journey. Yeah, so you went basically cold turkey, yep. even with your diet drinks, which I will, I mean, that took me till about two months ago. I've been carnivore since June of 2023, and it was about two months ago when I finally like let got, it go. Stopped buying the diet sodas. Yeah, yep. yeah. So good for you for getting rid of them, you know, right away. Um, but I was uh, how was that adaptation for you going kind of cold turkey like that? Because 
some people I know, they see my results or they see my channel and they give it a try and they're like, I just couldn't get through the fill in the blank, like the diarrhea or the whatever it is. And so they quit because they're like, it's just not worth it to have to go through that. Or they maybe think it's never going to end or that kind of thing. Did you have any sort of adaptation issues? Yeah. When it's worth it. Yeah. You, you go through stuff. Your body's adjusting. This is quite unlike anything that anybody's got. You get a headache. Oh, these headaches mm. just, I'm supposed to feel better, not worse. Mm. Get over it. This is part of the process. Tough love. That's me. It's like, I, I don't, I can't, I understand and I sympathize with people that do have those problems. Yeah, I've had the diarrhea, the disaster pants. Mm -hmm. I've had the headaches thing from withdrawal. Um, I've had the cravings thing. Hello, butter works for cravings. Mm, if you have a, yes. if you have a sugar craving, if you can take the time to go to the cupboard and get something to fall off the wagon, then you can take the time to go to the fridge and cut yourself a knob of butter. Yes. I love it. People think I'm nuts. My son saw me eat a, I call you know, hashtag bite butter, I call it. So he saw me grab some hashtag bite butter. He's like, did you just, wait, wait, did you just eat wait, that what? butter? I was like, I know. I was like, I sure did. Yep. And that wasn't was a photo like, op, honey. That was for real. <laughs> <laughs> and it was yep. delicious. And I love the way it makes me feel sometimes in the morning, like not every morning, but sometimes in the no. morning, my body just tells me like, you need some fat. And I'll go, yeah, about a tablespoon, a couple tablespoons of butter and just num num. And then I feel like I'm, as I'm heading to work, I just have this, like it, my brain just feels this carnivore, like, oh man, there it is. There's that energy. There's that calm. Like I'm ready to yep. go after my day. And it's like, after I eat the butter, yep. that's definitely how I feel. Um, so yeah, I don't do a lot of snacking. But I don't really count butter as a snack. Like you say butter is a snack. I'll eat butter and like maybe that's wrong, but I don't consider it a snack. It's like when my body says you just need that little bit of fat, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. And you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, there might be people who haven't started carnival yet thinking, what are these two broads talking about listening to your body? Have what the, where, yes. what? Your body yes. tells you when you need fat? Okay, trust me. When you actually start and you lift that fog, you're actually removing the noise, the noise being the sugar, the preservatives mm. and all the rubbish that they're throwing at us. And we're going, hey, yeah, kick it to me, kick it to me. Mm -hmm. If you stop catching that stuff, yeah. you'll be able to, it removes the noise. And you can hear, you can hear what your body's trying to tell you. You know, like Christy said, don't always have it in the morning. But when you do, you know it and you have it. Listen, mm -hmm. yeah, but you got you got to remove the noise first. Oh, a hundred percent. The noise for me was like, I would gladly give up my, you know, my healthier dinner, you know, a dinner of like, let's say chicken and whatever it was I was going to have, because I'm just going to replace those calories with M and M's, M and M's and Diet Coke, because why not? It's just calories, right? Exactly. And so Oof. I would do that all the time. Like if I replace my dinner with that, it's fine because it's the same number of calories. I'm not going to get fat, but like nutrition didn't cross my mind. It's, cr it's crazy. And then when you kind of wake up to this, um, it's pretty amazing. Like I would never go back. The things that called to me from the cupboard and they're still in there because my whole family doesn't eat like me. Um, <laughs> we're 50% of us, 50% of my household. <laughs> hey, it's carnivore. I'd... And then, 45. Yeah, I'll give it a strong yeah. 45. Yeah. Okay. And then, so those, what I'm saying though, is my old temptations, they're still in the cupboard, the chips and such. And I just don't care. So yeah, there was a phase where I, you know, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard to get oh, the, yeah, for that, sure. you know, that, to just not do it. Uh, I went to now, Costco yesterday. I went to Costco for the first time yesterday. I used one of those okay. things. I'm going to talk yes. about it on Monday. Okay. Oh, the food. Oh, like the free samples? Do they have free samples at Costco where you are? Well, People we, do that I, here. I came that's around like, the corner of, eat. I came around the corner of one part and, um, and I just went, could they make the chip packets any bigger? Mm -hmm. These things were huge. 
I and I had had this one uh, lady and her daughter towards the I mean the the plethora of Oreos. Mm. Yeah, I used and they're to eat standing those there, and I'm on me. I'm on me uh, scootery thing, and you know, and the mother says, maybe we should get some Oreos for nights. So buy some steak; you'd be better off. <laughs> did you get a look? <laughs> yeah, I bet did I did. care? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. But you know, what are what are the things that really struck me was. I, I was okay with going, looking at all this stuff, going processed, 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 oh, sugar, hello, sugar, 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 processed, processed, processed. Seeing trolleys mm -hmm. filled with what I knew to be lunchbox fillers, veggie yes. snack, you know, veggie sticks. All those veggie sticks. <laughs> yes. There's and veggies in them anyway, but okay. Right. The Jolly right. Rancher fruit snacks. Yes. And she's having to occupy her child by helping. So can you count how many boxes there are of the TVs? Because the, the kid is eating a Jolly Rancher thingy. And, mm. Mm -hmm. and the people mm -hmm. walking around inflamed and unhealthy. It wasn't so much the food that and uh, that upset me. It I found myself in that place of you darned food companies how dare you and i was like oh. and that's what happens when you go down enough of a rabbit hole to start with mm -hmm. you get angry if you get angry you're on the right track that's what yeah. i say to people if you get angry about pharmaceutical companies and food companies you're on the right track so get angry do it get angry it'll be your greatest motivator to start because mm -hmm. Mm, it's like my goodness yeah. i mean people say my son i had a, a conversation with my son the other night he said but gatorade's okay i said it was so the gatorade that was released in the 80s bears no resemblance to the gatorade that is now the ingredients is tripled in size and you know because he's got a problem i'm trying to get him off these darn energy drinks Mm, said, there's mm -hmm. a reason why some of them are banned in europe darling hello yes and you know that yeah so if you if you're starting carnivore and you're doing the research thing you'll know you're in a good spot when you start to get angry you'll know yeah that that leads me so you mentioned binge watching and i'm kind of laughing because my husband he was like if i have to hear that Tennessee twang from Dr. Barry for one more second, I'm going to lose my mind because when I first found Dr. Barry, I went carnivore. I mean, I went keto and I found Dr. Barry and I was like binge watching his keto playlist. And then when I discovered carnivore sort of accidentally, like I just got sick of making the vegetables and I just sort of started eating meat all on my own, not realizing it's actually a thing. Yeah. Then yeah. I, of course, found the. then I went through and did the carnivore videos. And yeah, it was like three months every day that if I wasn't teaching, I'm a teacher. And if I wasn't at work, I was watching Dr. Barry and I had to like pull out my earbuds <laughs> and do it that I way because it. he was, he was like, uh, uh, no more. <laughs> but I mean, I learned, that's how I learned. And then when I, once I binge watched all of Dr. Barry, it was like, oh, who else is there? And then I started finding, you know, Dr. Chafee and then the other people kind of like us with the smaller channels and yep. getting and But I'm like you where I will go through and try to watch you know, all, if not most, if not all of someone's content, but that's how can you really learn? how I learned. How can you learn? And it's repetitive, but every now and again, yep. you hear a nugget, you get this nugget. You do. Like, you oh do. my gosh. Yes. Or I mean, how click. can you learn anything from one minute and 30 seconds of a video that you skip to? How can you learn anything? It mm. might be inspiring. Sure. Great. Wonderful. But how are you going to learn anything? It, it, there's beginning in it. I, I mean, when you th and I think to myself, you know, some of those videos that Dr. Chafee have, the live streams, they go for over an hour. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get all the information you want from that particular video if all you're going to do is watch a couple of minutes of it. I'm yeah, just saying. and if I if I only have time to start it, I'll usually stop right there and then pick it up 
yeah get up late you know later and i try to finish it you know um but yeah I'm, I'm very interested because like like i said i get more information it was you know i went keto to lose weight little did i know about all the other benefits of you know a, a high fat ketogenic or carnivore diet i really I had no no clue. It was just I needed to lose 20 pounds again for the 18 millionth time in my life. Oh, no, and right. so, you know, so like let me try keto because it's something I never tried. I I didn't know anything about keto it. Was and fun. then I yeah. Then I got sucked down the old uh rabbit hole of oh my gosh, it helps this condition and this condition, and like our food is poison. What? <laughs> you know, Wait, and what? You just yep. Yeah. And so even though carnivore has not been you know, I'm still healing. Like I'm still working on some thyroid oh, issues. My gosh, weight me too. isn't where I'd like it to be, but it's like, what am I going to do? Go back to eating the Oreos? No. <laughs> um, no. And, and things are improving. I mean, things are improving. It, it's not yeah. instant. It's going to be a process. I spent, you know, 48 years eating the wrong thing. Um, and so I have to accept that. So, I, yeah. so you clearly had, you know, you're talking about your weight loss and you want, you had weight to lose. But what were some of your other um, health issues? Because you mentioned that you were just kind of sitting around, sadly, waiting to die. So well, was that uh, movement? I mean, you know, the legs were bad. They were bad, really bad. Like they hurt. It hurt to walk. I mean, I mean, the whole body hurt. And it was just easier to sit still. Hmm. The pain of being stiff, having sat down for so long, was less than walking around all the time. Mm -hmm. I know that I know that sounds a bit backwards. Um but it was it's the pain and I mean with no, no answers whatsoever as to what was going on like for instance, you know, I started to get the pain in my legs now ooh, about 6 years 6 7 years ago. I started taking ibuprofen because the pain was a lot. And, um, you know, I was taking it twice a day. And, you know, eventually the chemist was like, no, you're going to have to go to the doctor. We're not supplying you with ibuprofen anymore. I went, oh, okay, fine, whatever. So I go to the doctor, and, and this is another doctor in New South Wales. And um, I explained that I've got pain in my legs and I explained about the chemist thing. And he just gave me a prescription for Celebrex hmm. without actually looking at my legs to see what may or may not have been going on. Turns out it's lipedema, lipedema and lymphedema. But I find that disappointing that the doctors just took my word for it without examining the issue. Am I fixing it now? Yeah. Because is it getting better now? Yeah. If it if it wasn't getting better, there was no way I was standing still in a queue for 10 minutes to pick up my Costco membership card yesterday. Mm -hmm. That would not have happened 10 months ago. Yeah. Um, the mobility is getting better. And so is that sort of... Like I went to the doctors on Friday, as I said, for my my nose and ears and stuff. And I was able to walk from from the surgery, from the doctor's surgery to the car. Normally my husband would have had to have driven all the way around, even though the car was right freaking there. It was just right mm. there. But no, I'd have made him drive all the way around. But I'm like, oh, is that the is that our car? Right? Yeah. Oh, it's all right. I can walk there. And it was non-issue, non-issue. Hmm. Now, for that to happen, it took 10 months, folks. Don't ex This is what the people need to understand, that carnivore, yes, is it as simple as eating the meat and doing the things? Yes, it is. But the healing is not going to happen overnight. You know, a lot of people come to this lifestyle from a place of years and years and years and years of abuse where eating the food is concerned, that that rubbish that food companies have been, here, catch, catch that, catch that. We come to it from a place of we need some extreme healing, right? So 
please don't expect it to heal overnight. Took me 10 months to be able to stand for 10 minutes in a queue to get my. I would have had to have sat outside. 10 months ago, I would have had to have sat outside and said, hubby, just let me know when you're next in line. And that's how that would have gone. But I stood in that queue for 10 minutes. Mm. Took 10 months to do that. So I think I think Dr. Berry actually mentions uh, vitamin P, patience. I said that to my students the other day. It just came out of my mouth. I was like <laughs> talking about, I forget what I was talking about. I said, yeah, we call that vitamin P. And then I said, she says for patience. And they thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I know. That was like, yeah. Oh, I, I think Dr. Berry would be pleased that you used that in the classroom. I think I, so I think too. You'd be, I think you'd be really pleased to hear that. If Look, I you ever know, meet him. Oh, uh, <laughs> once I get over like the oh the fat girl, oh, I then know, you know once I get over I that know. part, because oh, I yeah. love his sense of humor. Love his sense of humor. Did you see their short that he and Nisha Berry did for Halloween? No, I missed that one. I roared with laughter. <laughs> I'm gonna have to He's go find dressed it. as the scarecrow. Okay. And she's dressed as Dorothy and he she says it's the line from but you know how how can you talk when you haven't got a brain and the scarecrow says a lot of people with no brains do an awful lot of talking don't you think and I'm like oh for him <laughs> for him and what he's trying to do with the carnival I'm like mm. I just roared I I had one of my kids come in are you all right I said yeah I'm fine I'm fine. And <laughs> I played it for them. Comedy. They got it. They got <laughs> yeah. it because of who he is. Right. Um, I, it was just absolutely priceless. I, I, I yep. Yeah, I love I, I think he's got the most amazing sense of humor. I think Dr. Chaffee is very cheeky. I like him. He's got a cheeky sense of humor. Yeah. Have you and met I think, him? Oh, uh, I no. I've got things that I want to do next year with my channel and doctors is one of the things that I want to do and have them. Ooh, that's on my exciting. Channel. Yes. Uh, Dr. Chaffee uh, is great. I, I've had him on my show, Linus Lifestyle Live, which I do with three other or the total of three, two other uh, meat based yeah. women. And he was our first male guest. And so that was a lot of fun. But no. I also met him in person at Hack Your Health in Texas. I saw Lindsay really? as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Apparently he's really, really tall. He's really tall. And he he's like, everyone thinks I'm short. Why does everyone think I'm short? I don't think <laughs> so he's short. He's I don't think he's short. Yeah. I think he, I think that the, the, my my thing with that would be, no, I know he's tall, but by how much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know he's tall. I have a feeling Dr. Oh. Berry's quite a tall one as well. I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Him, I haven't, I haven't met him yet. Um, yeah. Sorry, I don't know how we got off, got off on that tangent. I wanted to ask you about the um, ibuprofen. So you mentioned something, and that's not my experience here in the states. Like, if I need ibuprofen, I can just go to the pharmacy and buy as much ibuprofen as I want. Not that that's healthy. I'm just saying. You mentioned the chemist refused to give you anymore. So where you the, are is that you stuff? have to. Yep. Yep. That's wow. the thing. And you see when. When I actually started going down the rabbit hole, mm -hmm. I remembered the chemist telling me, we cannot give you any more over-the-counter ibuprofen. You're going to have to go to the doctor. But, well, that worked out well for Big Pharma, didn't it? Mm, and that's interesting. Conspiracy. That's But yeah. my brain went there. I'm like, that went, yeah, <laughs> that worked out really well for Big Pharma. So I had to yeah. go and spend money to go to the doctor. And then they gave me a script for Celebrex and I was on those for years. And the problem wow. is with those things, just they, the, those, those sorts of things like, you know, the ibuprofen and Celebrex was basically just a glorified prescription based ibuprofen, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. But those sorts of things, and I think even Dr. Berry's done a video of it, those sorts of things do actually exacerbate things like lymphedema and lipedema mm, the ingredients in them like i said once you go down the rabbit hole boom, and, and you can't go yeah. back you know i can't no, go, look, yeah. you, this this whole thing about a goal weight okay let's say i get to my goal weight tomorrow let's say i get a, what then 
Right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go and have four pieces of toast with peanut butter or jam, Nutella, or I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to, oh, let's go to Costco. Let's get a great big tray of muffins. I'm going to sit there and eat them all. Right. No. I know too much. Because it's more than just about weight. It's that's so right. much more than just about weight. And that's what I've learned in the last year and a half. Weight is like the least of it <laughs> almost. It's you know? a lovely side effect. Mm -hmm. yep. Losing the weight yep. is a lovely side effect. But when you consider what carnivore does for people who are the opposite end of the scale to me, they put on because they need to. Mm -hmm. This lifestyle is a very, very clever way of eating and once you remove that noise then it, then your body can do what it's very clever about doing your body's very clever mm -hmm. you know knows what to do <laughs> it does, it does, knows what to do yeah but you yeah, just gotta get I out mean, of this way and stop poisoning oh, yeah. it and get out of the way <laughs> absolutely um so uh, we had on my show, I'm going to say it again, Linus Lifestyle Live, we had Dr. Leslin Keith. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's a lipidema, lymphedema specialist. So that's on my other channel if you wanted to go watch that, Linus Lifestyle channel. But um, I wanted to ask you a little bit more of that. So like what, what kind of things are you doing? Are you doing anything besides diet to help with that? I've heard people using like things like vibration plates or, or things yep. like that. I wanted to ask, are you doing anything like that? Vibration plate every day minimum once a day it's um on setting number five for 20 minutes minimum once a day it is always after i've woken up always and sometimes you know if i go back into the house for whatever reason if i'm coming back i'm like yeah i fancy another one and i'll i'll sit there just full disclosure i'm not standing on it yet not standing on it yet i sit on my chair my little office wheelie chair with my legs on it. Anything is better than nothing. And Leslin mm -hmm. Keith, oh, she is a goddess. Yeah, she I was watched fantastic. One of, oh boy, I, she, I watched one of her um, her lives with um, Lindy, Todd, and Michael. Mm -hmm. And every in the air question that I've had about stuff like that and we're talking about my mother as well because she definitely had it she had lymphedema lipedema how she did when she was an opera singer how she did what she did i will never know i will never know um but there were some circumstances with which when she had her hysterectomy that there was wording in the report afterwards that's just touchy bit dodgy. Leslin Keith answered all those variable questions I've had in my head for over 20 years. Wow. In, answered them in 20 minutes, within 20 yeah. minutes of that live stream. Yeah. That woman is absolutely astonishing. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know that, you know, with lymphedema, lipedema, if somebody touches the legs, it's like, oh, and I just thought it yes. was just me. It was just mm -hmm. me. But then I'm like, okay, so that's not supposed to happen, Rod. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's a she's a goddess. She's a so goddess. So what there are it's nice to have experts like that because there are like medical professionals that will tell you that those aren't like real conditions. But I know that they are. I know many people with them. Now that I've my eyes have been open to it, I can see them. You can see them, and you just want to like, this can help you. But you know, it's you can't do that. But what Lead are some of the water. symptoms? Yeah, yep. yeah, right. What are some of the symptoms that you have experienced or are experiencing, and and have those symptoms reduced since going carnivore and starting with the vibration plate and things like that? Yeah. Well, first of all, there's the fitness level. That it's it's you know when okay when you do drop. 106 pounds then you you know that is going to alleviate the strain on your body period right mm. but you know i'd lost weight before and you know i was never getting that relief in my legs and it wasn't until carnival that i realized that it was the the healing part of it that i needed 
I, I knew something wasn't right because, of, you know, you, you're conditioned to think, oh, but I've just lost a whole pile of weight. I should be getting some relief on my legs, you know. That's where the mm. brain would go to. But I'm like, yeah, something, that's not right. I'm I'm losing weight. I did an Atkins diet. <laughs> um, oh, but I lost weight because, you know, whenever you reduce the carbs, hello, so – when I wasn't getting the relief in the legs, I'm like, what's going on? But, you know, with the vibration plate and, of course, with dropping 106 pounds, the fitness level's getting better. And because even though I'm sitting in front of this darn vibration plate, um, it's moving the fluid around, the lymph fluid around the lymphatic system. You know, I've even mm -hmm. noticed also that um, I'm actually starting to, you know, usually when I go to sleep, I'm propped up really high when I start. And then when I actually wake up in the morning, I'm lying flat as a pancake, right? But I start propped up quite high, which is not ideal for somebody with um, lymphedema, lipedema in the legs, right? Mm -hmm. But nowadays what I'm finding is when I go to sleep is like, no, I actually want to start going to sleep. I want to be flatter. Mm. So, you know, your body is more flat, so the lymph fluid is getting the chance to move around a bit better. The next thing will be to get one of those, you know, those pillows that I can raise my legs on. And then we're going to then we're going to see some serious stuff because, you know, because the, the compression bandages, for instance, when they put the bandages on the legs, they put them from the toes right up the legs to actually get that, lymph fluid up and get it mm -hmm. unblocked and moving properly so mm -hmm. it, like i said there's there's no magic pill stop looking at facebook and looking for magic pills it's just all going to take time and it's a process it's a learning you learn things along the way and it's like lindy mm -hmm. says you you get a little bit of information there and you get a little bit of information there there, yep. there, there. you take all of that and you shove it into your tool belt because yep. you just don't know when you're going to need it. As long as you've got all, as much information as you can, then you're great. If you don't know, you go to somebody's channel, a doctor's channel, and you type in in the search feature. Mm -hmm. Not hard. Mm -hmm. Research, 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 research. It's important. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. That's well said about the take this piece of information from here and there. That's exactly what it is. It's like there's these little things that, you, you know, you do it. Nothing in that regard, it's almost not that something you can search for. It's like you hear it and you go, yes, I've had, like you said, I've had that question for 20 years and there's the answer, yep. you know, little, yep. little did you probably know that you were going to hear it then and there. Yep. So it's just yep. a matter of staying plugged in. I find the other thing about continually watching, you know, carnivore content, um, even though it's at this point, mostly repetitive information is it keeps me sort of plugged in. And I've made so many friends too online, even when I'm not on the screen and I'm in yep. the chat, you know, I see familiar people, we chat, we tell each other about what's going on with us. Um, because I don't know any other except for my son. Uh, now, uh, for the last nine months, I don't know any other carnivores in real life. Um, How old is your so son? My son is 16. He was 15 when he started carnivore. He has really? ADHD. He has ADHD. I went on Dr. Chafee's channel and did a whole interview with Dr. Chafee about his whole story. And I have a playlist on my channel as well about the improvements that he has uh, found and seen and experienced going carnivore, but he's been carnivore since February. He just finished a nine months. Wow. So about your, cause you said you're 10 months. So about the same amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You mm -hmm. must give him a real congratulations from me. Because I would I love my youngest. He's got the autism happening, ADHD. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. would love him to go carnival. I'm telling you. I, I, because I, 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 but all you can do is just lead by example and just hope that they, you know, yeah, they just, you know, go. Oh, that that, you know, maybe when I'm long gone and they're having troubles with their health, and they'll sit back one day and go, I remember years ago, Mum was a carnival. Dang, that really helped her. I wonder if it would help me. Let's go to YouTube. Yeah. 
Right. That's all I can hope for. That to me is a yeah. best case scenario. I'd love them to do it now, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My 18 year old wants nothing to do with it. And I think it would benefit him as well. But when my yeah. other, my, my youngest son, you know, when he was 15, I just asked him because we had tried everything, you know, and this is not my interview. It's yours. I, I won't get into it. Feel free to go watch any of my videos, but we had tried everything. I mean, everything because I'm a school teacher. I have all yep. the tricks. Plus I have, I know the school system. I know how to do it. We tried also outside of, you know, medical interventions and counseling and therapy yep. and yep. all this stuff to with like no effect. Like I'm not kidding, like no effect. Um, and so I just asked him and then I crossed my fingers and hoped he'd say yes. I said, would you try it for 30 days? Now, was he hundred percent, was he eating just steaks? No, we did a lot of substitution food. So I made him like carnivore pizza pockets made with like mozzarella cheese and pepperoni and sausage. We started there. But now he's like, when are you making a chuck roast? Yeah, you got to start somewhere. He has texture issues because he also has sensory integration processing. If your son has autism, you're, yes. you, may, you may be familiar with that. So a lot of texture. sensory issues. Texture issues, huge yep. for my son as well. And so that was an issue. But now, at, you know, months in, he much prefers, you know, chuck roast is his, I think his very favorite. He likes chicken thighs, which he had tonight for dinner. He likes eggs with sausage, which he has most mornings, but we didn't start there. We started with carnivore pancakes because yeah. it was familiar to him and he still yeah. likes them, but he yeah. never asked for them. If he comes out yeah. and asks for, you know, if sometimes I will say, would you like me to make you the carnivore pancakes? Oh yeah, please. But he never asked him. He asked her, will you make me eggs? He doesn't ask, will you make me pancakes anymore? Oh, wow. um, and so it's, it was like this natural kind of transition for him and, um, it's, it's, I, I would highly recommend, I will help any mom that wants to like, how did you do it? I will, I'll give you the, you know, whatever, because it, I, it's, I can't, I never thought that diet would make that much of a difference. And I know who knew, who it's knew changed, it's, he's like a different person to like deal with. He doesn't have the angry outbursts and the, all these things that we were dealing with, like, not at all, like not like, okay, not, not at all, but I'd say it's 98% better. Yeah. I, I, I'd buy that for a dollar. 98% yeah, better. Right? I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah. I would definitely yeah. buy that for a dollar. Whereas yep. we tried all the interventions and got 0% result. You know, it, nothing, not even a little bit. We tried, you know, we spent a lot of money and a lot of time invested in it. We love him. And, and, and he's a great kid. So yes, M, I think that, you know, just keep, keep being the example. That's, that's my son saw me doing this for a year, yep. you know? And yep. then I was like, so what do you think? You've seen me start take up sprinting and you've seen me be able to come to your, he plays in the school band, you know, stay up and much later than my little bedtime. I'm, I'm usually an early to bed kind of person, but if, you know, in this case, I wanted to go support him, I was okay to do that. Instead of just being so yep. tired, I couldn't, you know, couldn't move um, to go and do that. And so, yeah, he agreed. And he just, I mean, even Halloween, he got invited to go trick or treating with his friends. He didn't eat any candy. He just, he just he went trick or treating and then gave all yep, the candy but away. Didn't eat the candy. You know? oh, <laughs> didn't wow. eat the candy. That's, just just to have the social time. You can tell your boy. Does your boy play video games and stuff like that? Yes, he does. Okay, then he will tell him this from me. He will know exactly what I mean. The fact that he went trick or treating and he didn't eat any of the candy, you can tell him from me. That's boss level. <laughs> okay, boss level. <laughs> Boss level carnivore right there. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's all of us, you know, because you're a YouTuber, all of us carnivores around this time of year, we start having live streams and videos about like, how are we going to handle the holidays? Have a plan, eat ahead of time, like all of these things. And since you're 10 months in, you're, I think what going through like your first holiday season, right? And yep. so my husband's already my asked, cause I've got a birthday at the end of the month. He's asked me because ah. usually it's like we get, Every, whoever's birthday is, they they choose what takeout they want, right? Okay. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. So my husband asks me, "That's right. You haven't told me what you want for your birthday dinner." I said, <laughs> "Tomahawk steak." Yes. And then there's the problem of what are we going to do about the cake? They can have one if they want. I'll sit here, do the happy birthday thing, blow the candles mm -hmm. out, and then they can. It can go away mm -hmm. and they can eat it. I'm mm -hmm. not interested. Mm -hmm. As for yes. Christmas, I'm really glad that last year I made my first and probably my only fruit cake. Uh, it was quite brandyized and quite potent, but I'm really glad I made it. 
Um, as for that, we've always been simple for Christmas dinners um, because it does get very hot here. So it's usually we always hang out for that, you know, that ham off the bone thing. It never mm -hmm. lasts in this house. It never has. And it's always been with salads and things. So the ham off the bone thing, I'm set. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we I'm have fine. Thanksgiving here in November. And my mom, <sighs> went. she's not carnivore, but she's like meat-based keto. She went keto two months after I did because she saw the benefits I was having. Oh, she that's wonderful. It. So she, so it's great. So like this Thanksgiving, we're having um, turkey, of course, but we're having a picanha, which I'll be bringing. Picanha is my favorite cut of beef. Um, and then a pork shoulder. So we just do, that started oh. last Thanksgiving because both of us were eating this way. And so, yeah, it's like the triple meat Thanksgiving. And then all the carb eaters, if they want to bring, you know, whatever they want to bring, they'll bring whatever sides. And they can bring their own. They bring their own sides. They can bring their own carb. Yep. They can bring your own carb. Yep. That's what it is. So bring my your mom, own carbs. You can make that yep. a party invitation staple. Yeah, bring your yep, own carbs, yep. meat supplied. <laughs> Yep. That's gold. So there'll be plenty of meat and um, it'll be, I'm sure, similar at, at Christmas. But it's funny to hear you say it's hot. I have to remember that because here, obviously, it's cold. <laughs> Christmas is, yeah. is uh, gets cold here. So um, anyway, yeah, it's it's not it's nice having a mom with a similar way of eating just because it, it, it did really help that first holiday season going through it mm -hmm. when I was like, how is this going to go, you know? Yeah. Now I'm now I this is my second time through it, so yeah. I, I feel like I'm I it's, it'll be easy, I think, this year. Yeah, but, um, I, sure I certainly alone. understand, yeah, no, but I certainly do understand, you know, the when you're newer and the temptations and the all that, you know, and and food often does play a big role for a lot of people, you know, in oh, those in those memories oh, and in those doesn't. celebrations. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things that I, you know, this is why community support is just so important if you are new if i could say anything to somebody who's starting don't go it alone if you can get some support you know like lindy's got her meat sister's place and there's there's, there's places where you can get the support that you need please don't mm -hmm. fly blind don't do this alone there's no need to be alone you're not alone yeah just, just it's, it's important to have people who are going to help support you because one of the things I'm really, really lucky. I've got an extremely supportive husband, really lucky. And, you know, my kids already think I'm mad anyway, so eh, nothing's changed there. <laughs> Don't care. But the thing is so many people have to do this lifestyle on their own and they don't have that support from their family, which is just criminal, in my opinion, when somebody is taking the plunge to take control of their life and take control of their health. And they've got people and it's it's kind of it's kind of not their fault because they're still institutionalized with what they've been fed information wise mm -hmm. and food wise. But mm -hmm. because one person in the house may have woken up and go, well, you know what, this looks like this is going to work for me doesn't give them the right to make that person feel like rubbish for taking control of their life and their health. And if anybody is in that type of situation, and I know there is, I know there is, mm -hmm. please reach out to groups who can help support you and help bolster you because you do not need to do this alone. You just don't. Yeah, that's such great advice. I know that that helped me, especially in the beginning. And now I'm like I said, I just have friends now in this community. So it just feels natural, you know, to hang out yep. with other carnivores. But at the beginning, I didn't know people. And I would just pop into the chat and be like, you know, because obviously my handle meeting wellness is there. But I'd say, hey, I'm Christy. And, you know, I just introduced myself and just, you know, now it's like, um, like I said, I just have this kind of little carnivore group of friends that I made online and we're all over the country. Um, yeah. But because of the because of you know the internet and things like that, it is easy to to keep in touch. I don't know if I would have been able to you know do as well as I've done without kind of building that in. Yeah. You know? Yep. So, it's essential. Um, I wanted to ask you about your goals for the future. 
Um, so you're, you've just started You're you know, you're 10 months in, I'm assuming you feel like you, you talked about goal weight and like, if I hit my goal weight tomorrow, so I don't know if you have, I, I'm not big about myself, you know, goal weight necessarily, but maybe it's you nice have to have you something have to aim for. It's nice to have right. that number to aim for. And, you know, oftentimes we need it. I mean, when you're at this end of the scale for somebody like me, who's like, um, it, it 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 helps to motivate us that number it's all about the numbers not going to deny that but for me in the future you know like my mother was an opera singer okay and i haven't been to the opera for so so long and it's like for something that was a part of my life up until 2001 to suddenly stop doing that for whatever reason and I mean I do have a video about rock bottom and I talk about all of that I just need to go back to the opera I need to go back to a theater to listen to the classical music again to just be a part of that whole process because it was a part of my life for a very, very long time. So there's that. But, you know, I, 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 I'd, I'd like my husband and I to have done honeymoon. We haven't had it. We've been married since 2006. We haven't had a money honeymoon yet. I'd like to go to the wow. movies with my husband. Hmm. I'm just saying. I mean, yesterday when we went to Costco together, oh, I was like, oh, we're going out with it. The kids love. <laughs> <laughs> it's I was a day smacking to his Costco. hand. He was trying to drive. I'm like, oh, we're going without the kids. I was smacking his hand while he's driving. I'm like, oh my god. But yeah, we haven't done those things, and we need to do those things. Mm. So it's it's like it's a, it's about as much as the goals of what I want to do. It's about it's a, as much about doing stuff with my husband and my kids' family as it is about that need I have for respecting my past and what I've been brought up with, and that is classical music and opera. I, ha I have to continue to respect that, and it was it. I didn't know any better, and that's that's fine, but it's folly for me to totally disregard it. That past, it's folly. Mm -hmm. And the carnival lifestyle, because it helped lift the mental health, made it better, if you like, lifted the fog. There are aspects. Do I miss my mum and dad every day? Absolutely. Every day. But it doesn't actually pull me under the tide anymore. Hmm. You know, it, it's there's a way of respecting your past You'll have your moments, of course, where you just, oh, and it kicks you in the gut. But to be able to respect my past by going to opera and concerts now, it, I, I have to have it. It, it, it. I just have to have it. I just have to have it. Yeah. Do you have a date when you think that maybe you will be able to do that? Like, do you have a like a date in mind at all or? I'm hoping I've got um, – there's a gentleman who's singing Verdi's Requiem up here in Queensland in, I believe, October next year. Okay. That's the goal because well, Verdi's, uh, Re Verdi's Requiem is my favourite Verdi piece. I just love that piece and I need to hear him live. And that's going to be the first one. And I am going, I'm going to move mountains to get there. I have to go. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. tell. I, I think you're going to do it. I, I'm excited yeah. to watch your channel and, and watch all of that develop because I'm sure you'll let us all know when that, oh, as that's happening, yes. when you buy the tickets and all that kind of stuff. That That's cool. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. That's you cool. betcha. You know, it's... It, it's not my channel's not always going to be about I lost this much this week and I lost that and I lost this and and this is what happened. Da, 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 da. There's going to be a time where the channel is going to evolve 
into, mm-hmm. well, I'm having a life now and guess what? You guys are coming with me. Let's go. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exciting. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to ask a little bit about your OMAD. I personally have a hard time with OMAD, although I did a few, a couple of weeks of OMAD, I was shocked. Um, I don't know, my body was just able to do it, but usually I'm good with two meals a day. Is there a reason why you chose OMAD? Do you just feel comfortable there? Is it the intermittent fasting? Is it, I don't know, what is it about OMAD um, that works for you? Well, within the first week, of starting carnival, I was going to do the whole at least breakfast and dinner thing, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And as I was making the breakfast, I think it was on day three, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, cooking away. I'm like, this is going to get old real fast. <laughs> just, mm. yeah. I don't know why it just it just naturally happened that I just went to one meal a day. Um. But that's not to say that if I am hungry during the day, if I want something to eat, I will have it. Mm, okay. As long as it's within the realms of carnival. But, right. um, you know, there's been times when, um, so like if we have smash burgers, right? My husband makes the most amazing smash burgers. I'm just saying he puts in beef mince, pork mince, and bacon in it. Oh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> so if for some reason I only eat one of those burgers, I put the other one in a container, sometimes the next day I'll I'll eat it as an addition. Okay. And that's happened with um like steak that I've had. If I've not been able to finish it, it's gone in a container and I've 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 sat here and I've eaten it cold, extra salt on it, and that's an mm-hmm. additional meal. If I'm hungry, I'll eat but I'm not, so I'm not going to, so I'm obviously getting exactly what I need. And I mean, even now, 10 months down the track, I know that there's, oh, I saw it on Steak and Butter Gang, Uh, something along the lines of in terms of the protein that you have, oh, was it one gram for every, or something like your goal weight, whatever your goal weight is, so like if, mm-hmm. if if my if my goal weight is I don't know 120 kilos let's just say then I'd be having 120 grams of meat per day and the other part has to be the increased fat mm-hmm. so I need to even 10 months I'm still learning mm-hmm. about yep. those things you, you if you've reached a wall and you go I've learned everything I'm going to know about <laughs> carnival <Uh-oh. laughs> No. no, you won't. Yeah, you learn something new every day. Trust me, you will. You will. Yeah, and I think too, as you go through it, you know, your body changes over time, and even just with aging, right? Like just getting older. Like I just had a birthday. I'm now 49. I'm not 48 anymore. You know, and it, I'm gonna yeah. head into menopause and things like that, and my my body's gonna change. And yeah, who knows who knows what that's gonna bring is in terms of you know, how, whatever, whatever, how much protein or whatever I'm going to be eating right now. I do very well on two meals a day. Yep. I, I don't, if I, if I try to do OMAD, it, it's that I have to try, like I am flipping hungry and I'm very upset about it <laughs> for the Ooh. last few hours, you know, until I get to that meal. And I just don't you get hungry. <laughs> yes. I restricted for most of my life. I was like a binge and restrictor you know, for most of my life since being a teenager and I'm just kind of done. I'm just kind of done with that. So probably if I put some more discipline into it, maybe I could lose the the little bit of weight that I would like to lose. But it's like for me right now, it's like I like just eating, intuitively eating my two meals, feeling satiated, not feeling hungry for the first time in my life, not feeling cravings, not wanting to go for the junk food. It's like, Mm -hmm. I'm just happy right now where I am. Freedom. So maybe, you know, food, yeah, it's freedom. freedom. It's freedom. Yep. It's freedom. It's yep. freedom. hundred percent. So like I had bacon and eggs for breakfast and then I knew my husband was taking me out. My birthday was two weeks ago, but we just got around to going out to dinner, but <laughs> I had a ribeye and then he was like, I'm kind of full. And I was like, yoink. And I took the rest of his ribeye and I ate that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's winning. 
That's winning. Winning, winning, winning. Yep. You, you don't, wait, you know, you don't he, waste a ribeye. No, and he had the side, you know, he had the sides. And so, yeah, he got full, but I don't eat sides, right? So I just had my ribeye and then he's like, you know, I'm kind of full and say no more. And I just finished it. Yoink, that's a I will eat, I know, that's it. But I, I'm with you if I eat leftover steak, a lot of times I do like it cold. Like when I eat my leftover picanha, I like it better cold. I'll I'll just cut it up into picanha bites and take it to work with me for yeah. lunch. Yeah. You know. I never but used I, to be. Yeah. Cold meat. Yeah. I never used to be okay yeah. with that, like at all. Had yeah. To be warm or hot. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I think picanha. Well, my family actually all thinks I'm nuts anyway. Old. So, you know, right. eating right. cold meat is like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's mum being mum being nuts. Well, I will say, I don't think my family thinks I'm nuts. I am fortunate in that way. Uh, my mom, like I said, did go keto. Other people, I don't think they know how I can do it. I've had uh, other people kind of at least try, but I think you have to get rid of all the all the junk. You know, like some of the people I've known that have tried, they're like, but I'm still having my square of dark chocolate at night. And I'm like, that's in yeah. my mind. That's why you're probably struggling because you're still... You're, you're just that your, your brain is still focused on that, right? Like you're still oh, looking yeah. forward to that. To, to oh, them, yeah. that's, that's their little bit of joy what or whatever. What time's that? You know. just had breakfast. Yeah, when's lunch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When's yeah, dinner? Yeah, yeah. When's yes. that little square of chocolate? Yes. Oh, and countdown. Yes. That you and don't that have has to worry about away. any of that. Not on that's this. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I think that's, that's the, because I've had a few people like at work try it. I've had people straight up tell me, well, I couldn't give up my, you know, fill in the blank. I can't give up my, my sweet potato. Sweet potato is a big one. I heard that recently. Really? She's telling me I have to give up sweet potato. Nope. Not going to happen. I'm like, wow. They're very attached to your sweet potato. <laughs> you know? Jesus. It's okay. Well, that, that, that'll get you so far. It's like mm -hmm. my thing with coffee. It is the only thing that I've hung on to and I'm hanging on to it. And I've, Quite realize if Dr. Chaffee was over here in a in a window, he'd be lying. Get rid of it. Yeah, he would well, tell you to get rid of it. It's it, a plant. Mm -hmm. Yep. But for now, it is the only thing, the only thing that I have hung on to. I yeah. gave up everything else willingly with a song in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that this won't be here forever. There's probably going to be a time when it's gone. Yeah. I recently now? gave up caffeinated coffees, but I still have my decaf. It's just my ritual in the morning. I get it. I get it. I, I, it's my ritual in the morning. I put a little heavy cream in there. Yeah. Um, a little electrolytes in there and it's just even, even decaf. And it's nice to not feel like, you know, I've got to have that caffeinated coffee to even be, you know, do, do my day, but it's still just, I can't, the, I've heard people starting to do like they just drink like warm or hot water in the morning, and I'm just not ready to take that step. I'm no, just I'm not, I'm not there. No. Not there. I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not so there. So I, 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 I've, I've. That's not to say that since I totally gave it up, I haven't had ever had a cup of caffeinated coffee. But we're talking. I used to drink four or five cups of caffeinated coffee just like all throughout the day, just to try to keep yep. myself going. Yeah. And there are many, many days where I have no caffeine at all, and then some days where I'll have like one cup with caffeine. Yeah. Um, you know, but mostly decaf. And and I do feel it's nice not to be on that. Like, okay, I have my caffeine and then it's like the crash, you know, it is nice. Oh, I know. It is nice. Yeah, it is. That, I've given up coffee before. Not a yeah. fan. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just <laughs> I really <laughs> like it. I really like it. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. But like I said, may, you, know, you know, if I can, if I can keep the coffee for now, having given up everything else i'm still putting that in the win column because yeah. even that is better when you put that against all the other rubbish that i used to eat it just is it's not ideal i get it but it's definitely better than what my diet used to be yeah oh which by was leaps and bounds woeful woeful yeah. it was woeful yeah 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 so yeah well, um, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me. This has just been great. It's been wonderful to get to know you. And I hope that we can do this again. Maybe we'll oh, uh, so. see each other, see each other around YouTube, I'm sure. 
Um, yep. At least in the comments, uh, I'm sure, <laughs> if, it, if in no other way, right? <laughs> well, you know where I am, my darling. I am but an email away. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. If you would uh, go ahead and like and subscribe to both of our channels, I'm sure that we would both appreciate you very much. And until then, goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Mwah.